Hello everyone and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today I'm bringing you an in-depth tour of a 2016 Onyx Black McLaren 675LT Spider from Super Ventura. A development on the 650S Super Series line, the 675LT features upgrades to its predecessor in almost every way. It's lighter, faster, stiffer and is limited to just 500 coupes and 500 spiders, with an additional 50 coming from the Carbon Series and the further upgraded HS line. With an emphasis on lightweight construction, the Elite of the Super Series is formed from a carbon monocoque known as Monocell 1 with bare interior carbon and exterior carbon panels. The Spider has a curb weight of 1,328kg, 40 kilos over that of the coupe. Its power comes from a McLaren standard 3.8 litre twin turbo V8, but with 50% new components over the 650S it means its output has been increased to 666 brake horsepower or 675 PS and 700Nm of torque. This, coupled with the weight reduction of 100kg on the 650S, results in a 0 to 62 mile per hour or 100 km per hour time of 2.9 seconds with a top speed of 203 miles per hour. The all new titanium exhaust system gradually turns purple and blue as it's driven in. It has a high airflow and has been developed to create more emotive sound. Stiffness is increased by 23% at the front and 63% at the rear with lighter springs. This model has been specced with the 10 spoke black alloy wheels, 19 inch at the front and 20 at the rear where they're also slightly dished. Pirelli P0 Trofeo R track ready tyres are fitted here, and at the time of being published, this is the lightest wheel setup offered by McLaren. Its stopping power comes from carbon ceramic discs fitted as standard, specced here with McLaren orange calipers. The 675 has noticeable aero upgrades on the 650S, with a new carbon front splitter that's 80% larger, and canards that aid lateral motion. There are also wheel arch lubes and rear long tail air brake. Above, its bi-xenon headlights are fashioned into the iconic McLaren tick with an LED accent and 675LT inscribed below. The side loops are options that can also be ticked on the coupe version and reduce pressure inside the wheel arch, therefore aiding turning. Moving centrally, we see the single wiper resting to the side of the windscreen. Behind, the electrically adjustable wing mirrors feature side indicators. They are finished in optional carbon fibre with wing-like carbon struts. Below, carbon side skirts begin with the muzzle designation and end with new air intakes and lighter side intakes finished here in optional carbon. These air intakes also hold the radiators and suck cool air into the engine bay. Above, the fuel filler cap can be found to the left. The cover only requires a simple push to be released. The air brake is 50% larger than that on the 650S, but due to it being constructed from carbon fibre it's also lighter. It deploys under hard braking and lowers to reduce drag under hard acceleration. It features a small LED strip at its rear, with the car's main brake, reverse and indicators below, which are also formed from LED strips. The car's reversing camera can be found below, intersecting perfectly aligned carbon fibre. The entire rear panel is made from carbon, with the Venturi tunnels exiting on either side. The key is of simple, streamlined design, made from carbon and aluminium with buttons for lock, unlock and the front boot. The 675's dihedral doors are opened using a small button on the underside, seen here. The interior is quite spacious and is finished here in black and orange Alcantara with orange leather and contrast stitching. I'll now take you on a short POV tour of the interior before going into more detail.
In more detail, let's start with the doors. They are upholstered in dark grey Alcantara with orange contrast stitching. At the rear, there are buttons to open and close the roof tonneau cover for additional storage, to prepare the car for towing and open the front boot. This LT has been specced with the optional Meridian High Definition Sound System, where a speaker can be found to wrap around the end of the door handle. Behind are the door release mechanism and electric window controls surrounded in carbon fibre inlays. Simply pull up and push out to open the door. These doors close with the optional soft close function. There are also leather manual emergency door pulls next to the seats on either side. In my opinion, entering is easier than exiting despite needing to navigate the seal. A commemorative plaque is found on the sill of each car. Entering the interior, we find the first air vent with the illuminated exterior light controls to its left. The air vents rotate 360 degrees and require the interior knob to be swivelled to close and open. McLaren are all about innovation and individuality for me. The stalks behind the wheel arches are a symbol of this. The wheel is almost reminiscent of Porsche being so clear of buttons and switches, and is finished in carbon and Alcantara. Ahead, the driver's display is divided up to three sections with the left controlled using a stalk to the same side of the steering wheel, being pushed up, down, out and in. The MTC logo represents the home menu. Next is settings where customization options can be found for things such as gear change cue, folding mirrors, various alarms and even wiper sensitivity. The next menu is Vehicle Info, where temperatures and pressures can be checked digitally. Then Language. And finally Trip for information on distance, consumption, time and average speed. To the left of the wheel is a button for the parking sensors. Almost the entire central column is carbon, reflecting McLaren's desire to save as much weight as possible. However, you still feel well provided for in the cabin. The 675 comes with the upgraded Iris 2 system on its touchscreen. Below, there are direct menu buttons that I will go through first. The first is for general settings. Travelling counterclockwise, the next is system mute. Above is air conditioning and ventilation. And finally, the back button. The central menu button features the McLaren Technology Centre as its logo and offers swivel controls for adjusting volume and the like. Onto the screen. Iris offers controls for phone calls and connections, media connectivity, the DAB digital radio, an improved navigation module, Apps including McLaren Track Telemetry System, where lap and track data can be stored and analysed. The reversing camera could also be accessed in this menu, and finally, voice controls. Below is the Active Dynamics panel, where handling and powertrain can be independently set in either normal, sport or track modes. These are accessed with air and launch by depressing the Active button. Below the ADP is the parking brake lever. In the centre of the central column we find the hazard lights, drive, neutral and reverse. The LT has a 7-speed seamless shift automatic gearbox 
that can be left in auto or can be changed manually using the paddles behind the wheel. From left to right, the other buttons are four, the small window behind the driver and passenger, the roof mechanism, the internal lock, and to open the front boot. By pulling up on the roof mechanism, the roof can be brought up, and by pushing down, the roof can be brought down. The roof increases the spider's weight by 40 kilograms over the coupe and can be opened and closed at a speed of up to 30 kilometers per hour or 19 miles per hour. The carbon buckets are upholstered in McLaren orange leather with black Alcantara. The carbon fiber seats have been modeled on those in the P1, saving a further 15 kilograms. They're significantly more comfortable than those in the Aventador SV. On the outermost shoulder, the belts are fastened close to the chairs. They are standard belts and are also finished in McLaren orange. To interior storage, there is a slim compartment in the central column with device connectivity ports. Below and between, there are two cup holders. Accessing a drink while driving could prove to be quite tricky. The passenger has a very slight storage compartment that's only big enough for the McLaren handbook that comes with the car. To exterior storage, the front boot can be opened by depressing the central button or buttons on the key and driver's door. The 144 litre boot opens easily and as you can see it is currently being used to store the cover and information books. There is extra storage under the tonneau cover but unfortunately I wasn't able to check that. Returning to the interior, we find mirrorless sun visors and simple LED lights and dimming mirrors centrally. So that concludes my tour of this McLaren 675 LT Spider that, at the time of publishing, is currently for sale at Super Futuro. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, cheers.